So palliative care is provided um, frequently by specialists. As most of you know, palliative care became a specialty in the year 2006. There are about 5,000 palliative care specialists in the U.S. And these specialists provide palliative treatments uh, more and more commonly alongside disease-directed interventions. And the goal is to improve the quality of care, the quality of life for patients and families who are at any stage of a serious illness. And increasingly, palliative care is being asked to become integral to these capitated risk models, so populations of advanced serious illness and impacting that through care delivery models in either a per member per month type of model or a capitated risk. So I mentioned that there's about 5,000 palliative care specialists in the U.S., which unfortunately is not nearly enough to address the needs of the current needs of our aging population and those with advanced illness. If we look at a moderate estimate, we'd need about 6,000 FTEs, and a fully loaded estimate is anywhere from 10,000 to 14,000 in some, some series. Most palliative care specialists in the U.S. do not have the opportunity to practice full-time in the field. Both of them are juggling palliative medicine specialty with other types of endeavors in medicine. So we are truly facing an unprecedented time in our history of the silver tsunami, meaning that Americans are aging, and it's not unusual for us in family meetings to have a discussion with a 90-year-old mother whose 70-year-old daughter and 50-year-old daughter, granddaughter and 30-year-old great-granddaughter are all in attendance in that meeting. So we're seeing Americans living longer. And as they live longer, they tend to accumulate chronic illness. So the older the adult is, the more likely they are to have multiple chronic illnesses. And those illnesses are increasingly associated with debility and functional challenges. So if we're to address this silver tsunami well, obviously a specialty delivery of palliative care is not going to be enough. And in truth, it would simply be one more specialty to address the needs of a population when there is such an opportunity to drive these competencies of palliative care into the very fabric of health care. And when I think back of, of us actually pursuing specialty status, our intention at that time was very much that we would incorporate palliative care competencies into medical school curriculums, into residencies, and see this growing capacity to deliver generalist level palliative care. So the idea of this tiered approach, the generalist palliative care, and then some within that who are truly champions, who devote their energy, their, their studies to improving their ability to deliver palliative care. And then also, of course, palliative care specialists. So the definition of palliative care, this is from Amy Abernathy and Tim Quill's article in New England Journal of Medicine last year. If we were to define primary palliative care, it would be, again, that every physician, nurse as well, would have these basic competencies in the management of pain and other symptoms, the ability to assess and manage depression and anxiety. And key to generalist level of palliative care is competencies and capacity and ability to negotiate through goals of care conversations, some of the more challenging aspects of discussions around prognosis, goals of treatment, and of course, to ascertain what constitutes suffering for patients and their families. And then in this model, the specialty level palliative care would be reserved for those scenarios that are much more challenging as far as symptom management, or perhaps much more challenging in terms of communication and conflict. So the idea would be of this continuum of primary palliative care and specialty palliative care. And what this requires of us is each medical specialty, remember that there are 10 different medical specialties that support, in essence, or uh, are part of palliative care if we went on to become specialists. But any medical specialty should be thinking about how they would deliver generalist level palliative care. And health systems as well should be thinking about what are the basic expectations of our physician component? What, what can we do to enhance the delivery of primary palliative care skills? 
And part of this might be improving or creating a triage or trigger system that identifies patients at risk for unmet palliative needs and can initiate primary palliative care as well as specialty level palliative care. And this also really compels us to create enduring curriculum, vital curriculum that drives primary palliative care competencies for every physician, not just those in residency, but those who are in mid-career, and use performance measures to demonstrate improving ability to manage symptoms and to provide expert or nearly expert communication. 